Hey, pause up, everybody. Welcome to Meow Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore. This show is presented to you each and every week by the Cat Fancier Association. And we're also very, very uh, happy to acknowledge our possum Meowvelous sponsor. We're talking in Clover, the makers of cat and dog supplements. We, uh, I wouldn't do the show without uh, some uh, good teammates. We've got all breed CFA judge Kathy Black, Woo! pet safety cat KC. He's flying solo. We'll tell you why in a minute. And hey, we're equal opportunity here. We got our doggy designee, Destiny. How's Destiny? Hi, Destiny. I'm um, doing good. Thank you for asking. Yes. And do you love a good mystery? Are you into a little bit of sci-fi? Well, you're in for double luck because our special guest today is an award-winning author in both genres. She's going to give away a couple of her books. We're going to find out what it takes to be a mystery writer, get into sci-fi, and much more. But at this time, please give pause and applause to the one and only Molly Hunt. Welcome to the show, Molly. Thank you, Arden. Casey says, I'm going to sit down now. I'm comfortable now. So the big question you're all having in your mind, where the heck is uh, Rusty the performer? Well, today I'm not in my backyard office, Arts Den in Dallas. I'm actually in Allen, Texas, where I am staying at my sister's house while she goes on a long family vacation. Maybe we should show this photo now. Uh, oh. Kathy? This is my life right now. I am taking care of six dogs and check out where Casey is. Casey's like, this is my canine posse. I love them. So in the middle on the futon are my dogs, little Emma Gemma and a pet safety dog Kona. And on either side of them, we have Oliver, we have Jeannie and sitting on the floor looking sweet, our Jackson and the dog Maddie. Uh, later on, I'll tell you, Maddie, the dog I actually rescued in pet first aid when she choked on uh, dental floss, and I gave her rescue breathing and brought her back. So, I, I, uh, what do you guys think of this picture? Do you, what do you think when you see six? I think that Casey looks like Santa Claus, and that's all his reindeer pulling. Him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this? What does that conjure up a caption for you, Molly? Oh, I, I think he's he's the king. He knows that. Uh, <laughs> That's where worship does gods. Yeah. And I love that every one of these, including the cat, are being true camera hounds, wouldn't you guess? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's but I love true. them all. They're they're my they're my nieces and nephews of the fur persuasion. And we're having a blast. Believe it or not, the, the Magnificent Seven and I, we're doing all right. So I'm wrangling six dogs and a cat. <laughs> and I'm still here. So Hatsu! Excuse me. <laughs> to get into cats and allergies because we all have friends including veterinarians and animal behaviorists and <clears throat> my co-host who have allergies to cats it doesn't have to be a situation anymore where you can't have a cat in your life so i wanted just to talk a little bit about cat allergies and uh, throw out some ideas, and Molly and, and Kathy, certainly you are too. When people think of, a, of the allergy in a cat, it's the F-E-L-D, but it's not the fur. What is it, ladies? It's, it's the saliva. saliva. Look at these two brainiacs, the saliva. Saliva, saliva, saliva. So you don't want that special cat breed, the spitting cat, I'm just kidding. But, um, <laughs> Let's talk about those folks that think, well, I'll just get a hairless cat, like a Devon Rex or a Cornish Rex or a Sphinx. We have an all-breed cat judge right here in the building. Well, she's in a different place than I am. But talk about uh, what are some tips for folks that may have those kinds of cats to minimize some of that saliva, Kathy? Well, it doesn't matter what the breed is, whether it's Siamese or it's a Persian. Um, you want to keep it clean. Uh, that's the only way that I can uh, be around my animals is if I, I give them regular baths. And sometimes I don't give them baths as often as I should. Uh, and that's when I usually have 
a pretty bad allergy attack. Um, when I'm judging cats, most of the cats yeah. that show are clean, so they don't bother me. But some of the breeds, you want the coat to lay flat, and those cats will not be as recently bathed as some of the other breeds and I have to be careful not to let them get around my face otherwise I'll break out in a rash or I'll have a sneezing attack a couple hours later um, so and I don't I let the animals in my bedroom so I don't want the cat fur in my bed otherwise I wouldn't have any eyes in the morning or I wouldn't be able to breathe so you know it's just a, that's just the way I live with them but you know you can take um, distilled water and wipe those cats down with distilled water in between baths to get that saliva off of them, especially those breeds that don't have a lot of hair, like the Sphinx, the Cornish, the Devon, um, Japanese Bobtails, uh, Siamese, the color Point Orientals, all those breeds. Just get that saliva wiped down off the cats. Um, of course, I take allergy medication, and and then I have to make sure that I don't touch my eyes or touch my nose after I've been petting the cat because then I'll <laughs> I'll have an itchy eye or start having a sneezing attack. So um, okay. I'm not so highly allergic to just walking into the house. My eyes swell shut, but I did have a friend back when I had carpets that couldn't even come in my house because she walked wow. in my house, her eyes would swell shut. So there are people that have severe allergies to cats. That's a little different than those, those of us that just deal with the minor, you know, the minor uh, irritations of it but well, you, um, you you did yeah. a good tip then that was have your bedroom be a cat free zone so you can sleep without sneezing uh, another thing is you see this now this is thank goodness we live in 2021 and not eight, uh, 1970s with shag carpet yeah. <laughs> carpet it's it shows that it actually accumulates up to 100 times the amount of cat allergens then that uh, uh, hardwood or, you know, the, the laminate lamp, or tile like or whatever. That. So yeah. uh, this may give you a good cause to uh, say, please take the carpet, the shag carpet. You can now finally remove it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and this is something, though, that may frustrate us all. When you vacuum, it actually blows as many allergens in the air <laughs> as it removes. Wow. Well, if you have a HEPA filter on your vacuum, it won't. But Well, that's my next thing. See, this is when we team up good at Catholic. Yeah. So get that HEPA. It's called a high efficiency particulate arresting filter, HEPA, and that'll HEPA you out a lot. Of, okay. Yes. All right. Um, go outside. Get some fresh air. That that also helps. And if it's the weather's accommodating. You know, open the windows, keep the screens. We don't want kitty escapes. Um, and like you said, bathing a cat is really, really uh, good. Um, there are some cat safe cleansing wipes you can use. Um, and then uh, here's, a, here's another tip. Clean that cat box, the litter box, because they have found that, that the cat allergen is in the urine and sometimes uh, uh, when they make a drop of deuce, mm -hmm. right, Casey? I did it right before the show and I feel so much better. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so another reason to clean that box out every, every um, week, every week, every day. And mm -hmm. um, the other thing is um, talk with your doctor about what would work best for you. Um, there's different uh, kinds of medications and decongestants. Uh, they've had some studies. Vitamin C and E are showing some help. It's not a cure-all. Please don't say I said that. And uh, uh, so I just wanted to let you know, even if you achoo with your cat, they're nothing to sneeze at. They're amazing, amazing pets. And I'm just lucky to have my little man right here. He's very happy to be the only cat in the room right I now. I bet. You know? yep. Can you see how different he is than on a regular show? He's up and all around. He's like, oh, I'm, Rusty's not here. <laughs> 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 all right. So we want to announce some winners because we had several gifts um, from last week's trivia question. The question was, Global Cat Day was started in 2001 by what organization? And the answer is Alley Cat Allies. So shout out to that great organization. Um, we have the winners. We're going to get, watch, I'm going to bribe Casey. The winners are going to get um, a set of these cool hats, 
cat hats. Casey goes, look, they're also make into a toy. <laughs> okay. And they are from Onyx Cats, our friend Jill Thompson. And we also have a four pack of in Clover from our sponsor. So, um, and I think we had a third prize. Too. Are we going to do it all at once? Yeah, sure. Okay. The third prize, last week we had uh, cat behavior consultant, Dr. Marcy Koski, and she's giving away one hour a cat consult via Zoom, and you can win it, and if you wish to give it as the gift to someone else, it is transferable. Can you show that Meowie Hour one more time? Uh, sure. The Meowie, the uh, In Clover. We really appreciate our sponsor, In Clover, and regardless whether you won or not, Please, after the show, go to inclover.com at checkout. It's for cats and dogs. Type in Meowie in Clover 21, and you're going to get 10% off your order. They make a whole array, not only cat and dog treat supplements for different conditions, but they also deal with digestion and joints and even dental health. They've been around for 25 years. Big shout out to this group, and thank you, in Clover. Okay, so... We know that the winner winning was Alley Cat Allies. Who are our winners, Kathy? All right. So the In Clover Treats, the winner was Diana Knott. And uh, Diana was the one that also won the uh, Meowie Wana uh, and Doggy Wana shirts. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Diana Knott won the In Clover. Uh, Toby Swartz. And Jen Helgren are my winners for the uh, knitted hats. And I, I have Toby's address because Toby's a previous winner. But Jen, you do not accept messenger requests from people that aren't your Facebook friend. So Jen Helgren, I need you to email me your mailing address so we can get your hat to you. It, All right, that's J-E-N-H-E-L-G-R-E-N. -E -E we yes. know you've tuned into the show. We love that, Jen, and we, we love you. We hope you're tuned, tuned in today. So and, Kathy, uh, Kathy Black at yahoo.com. So uh, yeah. send me your mailing address, Jen, and I'll get your prize to you. And then the person that had the correct answer for Brown Noser, remember Brown Noser? Oh, yeah. That was the name of her cat. That wasn't um, one of our guests. That was the name of a cat. Molly. Yeah, right. And <laughs> and uh, Lisa Alshul was the winner of that session. Oh, uh, nice! We yeah, so, so congratulations to Lisa, Diana, Toby, and Jim. All right, all right. So, you guys ready to put your thinking caps on right now, or thinking collars? Okay, here's the question: ripped from the headlines. There is a cat in New Hampshire who belongs to a person named Mel Elam. E L A M. The two of them, talk about a venture cat, the two of them have just completed climbing all 48 mountains in New Hampshire. I didn't even know New Hampshire had one mountain, <laughs> but they have 48. Shout out to New Hampshire. And I want to know if you know the name of that cat. So I'm going to give you four choices and they all rhyme. So you've got to pay attention to the the name. Here we go. Is the name of that cat who either walked on a harness or rode in a backpack and successfully did all 48 mountains in New Hampshire? Is that cat's name A. Blokey, B. Dolky, C. Floki, or D. Pokey? <laughs> Don't worry about spelling. And I so, just posted that question on the Facebook chat. Okay, so blokey, dolky, flokey, or poke. <laughs> I'm going to have some strange dreams tonight, don't you think? <laughs> what do you guys think of that cat? That's amazing. That's amazing. Remember we yeah. had uh, Emily Hall on? Uh, she's got Kitty Cat Go. She's, there's a big movement with adventure cats. And this particular mm -hmm. one, which oh, I don't want to say the name, looks chill. Like, I got this. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going at night going, <laughs> okay that was really bad right that's bad yeah that was pretty bad thanks <laughs> that's, why you had me. that's right all right enough of this nonsense i am a non-fiction writer i've written a number of books 
I guess it's because I was a newspaper reporter. I'm too scared to imagine to come up with a fiction book. But that's not the case of our special guest today. Hailing from Portland, Oregon, we've met a few times at Cat Writers Association. Um, she is quietly powerful, and I think it takes a lot to be able to craft a mystery. But she doesn't just write any mystery. I love this genre. Cozy paranormal mysteries involving cats. And oh, let's go to another genre. She also does sci-fi fantasy. And she has won awards. She's got some books coming out. We're going to talk all about it. But at this time, please welcome to Meowie Hour, Molly Hunt. Molly, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. All right. We, I mean, it takes a skill set to craft the plot and things like that. But can you just briefly tell us what's the difference when it comes to a sci-fi fantasy and a cozy paranormal um, mystery? I love, I love both of those terms. Well, let's start with the mysteries. Um, there's the mystery genre and then cozy mystery is a subgenre and cozy cat mystery is a subgenre of that. And cozy paranormal cat mystery is a uh, kind of subgenre of that. Um, I write both uh, a regular cozy mystery with cats, uh, my Crazy Cat Lady Cozy Mystery series, which features a uh, cat shelter volunteer. And we're gonna my, get into that in a minute. So, yeah. so that's that definition. But, Go ahead. But my, my newest uh, is the paranormal cat mystery. The uh, sci-fi fantasy, cat sci-fi fantasy is a totally different, a totally different thing. Um, as different as, as uh, mysteries are from science fiction. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. so what's the, what's the, yeah. the setting? What's the year yeah. setting for your sci-fi? Yeah. We... Um, it's uh, current without stating a year, but it, uh, they, it's actually a series. It's a tetralogy. There's four of them. Um, My brain is heard in just your, your terms you're spitting out. <laughs> oh, tetralogy. That means there's four. Oh, I only knew you about know, trilogy. I just thought well, everybody right. knows trilogy because of Star Wars. And how do you spell that other one? T E T R A L O G Y. And that's four books in a series? Yeah. Well, you just taught me something new. Tetology. Wow. And okay. and what's a cozy cat? Yeah. Okay, we'll go back to the uh, cat mysteries for a minute. A cozy mystery is a story that is more character driven than thrill driven. Okay. It's all about the puzzle and the characters. Um, it often takes place in a small town or community. There is no uh, overt sex or violence or swearing. Casey's like this. Bummer. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I'm neutered. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's it's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, there's a lot of people that are really uh, into reading a clean a clean book that they know that yeah. it's not going to scare them to death or or um, shock them or or they can read it to their kids and there's no curse words. They can read it to their kids. And, yeah. And um, well, let's let's back up the bus. So. You're in grade school. <laughs> Were you in a spelling bee and said, I know what tetralogy is and that's what my career is going to be about? No, um, although I, I did know I wanted to be a cat writer when I was in grade school. I you did? Started, yeah, I started writing my first cat stories in Mil Mrs. Wilson's fourth grade class. Oh, that's and was amazing. that in Oregon? Yeah. Really? What was the, what was the impetus? What was the motivation? Loved cats. All your life. I loved cats. They're just so wonderful. I had a world called Catland. You know, I was, I would, I, I'm a classic introvert, shy, doesn't go out much, doesn't like other people too much. At, at, like when me, I was right? in school, I had like this one friend 
and that was it. Um, and we'd go and play these imaginative games and uh, everybody else was out rocking to the Beatles and stuff like that. So but I, I, I know you're quietly powerful and <laughs> you sweet. met at the Cat Writers Conference and everybody who's tuning in who is uh, a member of the CWA, our big um, communications contest is this Saturday. It's going to be virtual. And I know you've got some in the running, so I'm yes. wishing you well, Molly, that you yes, thank take you. home a brand new house. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a museum, but it's a nice thing to win. So good luck with that. But uh, talk about for people that might be interested in writing fiction. Are there a few tips you can share with them how to get a, the voice of a character and I, I know that you can't just say um, Toledo's in Kentucky. So you yeah. do have some things that have to be grounded in fact, right? Oh, yes. Um, a, a fiction book takes uh, maybe not as much research as a nonfiction book, but all points have to be checked because if a fiction writer writes something that's wrong, uh, say a medical setting that doesn't ring true or a okay. police setting that doesn't ring true or a, or just stating a fact that's that's not research uh, she'll lose readers okay the minute somebody who knows the real answer to that is going to say uh -uh, no All right and that's the end of that so yeah we have to do um research i've got a guy who helps me with my um firearms um uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. I know nothing. I know nothing <laughs> about guns. Screen? Okay. Yeah, I know nothing about guns, and so he's he's very helpful. Well, that's um, that spills into a good tip. So you need to have a little bit of a mini team of people yeah. that have uh, expertise in certain things that you don't. Yes, but that that comes later. Uh, usually, when people when you start writing a book, when I start writing a book, I just write. The, all the way through the first draft. Um, wow. The stuff I don't know, I put little X's and little notes to come back to it later because I don't want to wreck the momentum. And I don't know where the story is going to go. Um, I have a vague idea, but I'm not one of those people that has an outline and knows what's going to happen next. Well, um, that could be good or bad. I'm wondering, like people like yeah. Stephen King, I bet there are sometimes he's written a book and he doesn't have all the answers. Things kind of unravel and evolve, right? I think so. I think even for people that do have the uh, strategic outlines, um, you have to be open to uh, the muse and the, the character of the story to let it, uh, let it take its place. And I'm often not imaginative enough to come up with the really cool stuff the first time around. You well, know, I like, hear you. I, we yeah. all know who the murderer is because I know who the murderer is. So at the end, I have to change the murderer to somebody I don't think the murderer is going to be to fool you. Nice. Well, let's dive into um, your um, cozy paranormal mystery series. Um, it's the Ghost Cats of Ocean Cove. This is the first in a series. Is that correct? It is. So talk about this because this is one of the books, everyone. She is going to autograph and give away to anybody who answers the question I'm going to ask you at the end of the show. So pay attention. So talk about Ghost Cats of Ocean Cove. Ocean uh, Cove. What the, of Ocean Cove, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Ocean Cove is a fictional town uh, on the coast of Oregon. Which is where you live. Uh, which there is where I live. Now you know your geography, um, yeah. My, my other series takes place in Portland, which is a real place, believe it or not. Okay. But this is, this is totally fictional. And this is about a woman, a septuagenarian. She's 70 years old, and she fulfills her lifelong dream of moving to the Oregon coast. Okay. So I'm just reading from the back here because it's easier. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. She's in for a shock. Her real estate agent failed to mention the previous tenant was murdered on her doorstep. And three years later, the case remains unsolved. Oh. But that's not all. At okay. the back of her garden lies an ancient gravestone of a cat named Soji. And Soji's Soji? ghost wants to come out and play. So that's the paranormal part, is that there is a ghost. And... Uh, How do you spell Soji? S-O-J-I. Okay. Wow. So there's a ghost cat. 
there is a ghost cat. Um, she's that actually quite well known through, yeah. pardon? Yeah. Resides on that property. Yeah. Does. Wow. Wow. Since, since the turn of the century, the last century before this one. Now this and, is uh, your first in a series. Is this going to be the tetralogy? Is this going to be a four book series? That you think? No, this one is just going to go on and on forever until I get sick of it. <laughs> so you got fresh ghost cat uh, topics, right? So, all right. Uh, so then yeah, I'm working on the second book now, which is going to be called Ghost Cat in the Midway, on the Midway. It's about a, uh, about the county fair. Really? Is it also going to take place in, uh, on, the, on the West Coast? Ocean Cove, yeah. Ocean oh, Cove yeah. is a little town, and it's the Ocean Cove County Fair, and uh, there's a tiger, and that's all I can say. Well, you know, move over, Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> I'm Molly Hunt. I, I got hooked on that show, didn't you? Because oh, absolutely. It was a Yeah, that's my go-to show. And, I mean, how did she find so many killers and people murdered? I, I don't know if I wanted yeah. to be a friend. Yeah, Over 200, like 279 or something. Yeah. My editor once asked me, she said, you know, can these people, uh, can, can Lily, my other character, can she find, how can she find so many murders within a space of a year shouldn't you string it out a little bit more and I said no it's uh you know it's fiction it's fiction yeah and you got to help that gentleman teach you more about guns yes yes and more about uh, cats yeah so folks this is just one series that she is now launching but she is very well known for her crazy cat lady cozy mystery series and talk about your protagonist Lin Lindley Cannon. Yes, yeah. there's a CFA <laughs> connection, everybody. Take a listen. Lindley Cannon is a crazy cat lady, only she's not quite crazy yet. That's what she says when people try and tell her she's the crazy cat lady. Um, this is the first in the series, and this is another one that's going to get it up a little home. closer. There you go. Okay. There we are. Beautiful cover. Yeah. Uh, I have an uh, acquaintance who does all my uh, artwork for me. Uh, another, another cat person. If you want to say we're the a, name of the person, we're fine about that. Give yeah. That out. It's Leslie Cobb, cat artist. And right. She lives in Portland as well now. All right. And she does amazing work. Just amazing. So Lindley Cannon, how did you yes. come up with that name for your um, protagonist? She told me. What? She told me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they tell me. The okay. characters tell me who they are, really? what they look like. She's loosely based on me. She's a 60-something cat shelter volunteer. She's got a therapy cat that she takes to assisted living in hospice places she's um fosters cats and and uh, does all the cat stuff um but she also gets all caught up in all these murders which i do not um well that's, that's where you draw the line okay. that's where we draw the line yeah no murders oh, thank for me. goodness <laughs> yeah, so what's the connection with her because she had this thing in her head about purebred cats but you weaved in yes. a little bit of updated knowledge which we do appreciate what what did you do with her character what happened well when Lily started out when we started out with cat's eyes now we're eight books further along um Lily was against the idea of people buying cats because there are so many cats in shelters cats are being uh euthanized in shelters because they don't have enough space for them luckily not here in in uh our area in oregon because we've got a wonderful humane society and uh, advocacy groups who've eliminated uh cat overpopulation here um but some places they still do so that that was her reasoning but as she learned more and more about cats and uh cat societies such as cfa um she came to find that they were actually doing a lot of good for not just uh, breed cats and show cats, but for regular cats. And she learned about the household uh, the household pet classification in uh, the cat shows. 
And many household pets win big prizes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Casey, Casey's chomping at the bit. He goes, I think I got a face that could win. What do you think? Yes, he does. But, I'm oh, sure no. he could. He goes, I would just charm him. I'd bring it in my six dogs. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. He learned about <laughs> my CCW fan club. W too, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell yes. you also that your character learned about CCW. Yes, yes. She just recently has learned about the Companion Cat World program, which is from started, CFA. By, it's led by our co-host Kathy. Thank you. Yes, Kathy. and so within the uh, next couple of books, that is definitely going to be mentioned. I, I like that. how you Thank your you. characters you. evolve and and yeah. they get to learn. So that was yeah. a really that's a big thing because the reason I'm here with Meowy Hour is we're championing all cats, purebred and cats like Casey, yeah. um, and. The folks that do the breeding responsibly and yes. do the cat shows, you know, there's not a zillion cat breeds out there, folks. Yeah. And they're doing everything they can to preserve those breeds in a very healthy, healthy way. I guess I said that right, right, Kathy? Healthy, yes. healthy. I, I consider us yeah. preservation breeders. It's a term I stole from the dog world. But uh, yeah, they call we're breeding these breeds to keep them going. Otherwise, they become extinct, a lot of them. So yeah. we're preservation breeders. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm laughing. Do you guys see how still Casey is? He's never this way. What do you guys think of him when he's in a different environment without his butthead brother? <laughs> well, he, I think he like just wants to be the ham. He, he knows he don't have to share the limelight with anybody. Well, so there is some goodies in here. I am. He's, he's going to be the ham of the show. Handsome. Yeah. Very handsome. Hey, um, I am amazed. So she's given away two books. One is called Ghost Cats of Ocean Cove. That is the first in a series she hopes to go on forever. And the Thank second you. is called Cat's Eyes. That is actually the first book in her series of the Crazy Cat Lady Cozy Mystery Series. So I'm really, I appreciate you giving away two of those books but we got to learn a little bit more about you. Um, and it has to do with something happened to you in 2014. Miss oh. Introvert, you were fostering a cat. And tell us what happened. Yes. Uh, back in 2014, there was an incident where uh, a cat became very aggressive to a family and apparently herded them into their bedroom where they were afraid of of the cat and they called 911. Oh my and they God. took a they took a video of it of course because everybody does and it went viral. <laughs> and uh in most of those cases where a cat becomes violent uh and aggressive they're just euthanized. Um they they don't ask why, they don't ask, you know, try and find a reason. Um right. But in this case, because it got on the internet, Jackson Galaxy, the cat behaviorist, got involved. And my cat came from to hell. See, I'm yeah, animal. my cat from hell. He came to Portland to um, see if he could do something about this cat. That's cool. Well, I foster for the Oregon Humane Society, and uh, they put a call out for somebody uh, experienced foster to foster a special cat, and they did not say much about it. So That's I, cool. of course... <laughs> said Satan. sure I can foster a cat <laughs> and uh it turned out to be this cat whose name was Lux. Not um, Lucky, Lux. Not Lucky. I called him Lucky because he oh, seemed lucky. Sweet. Yeah. He seemed pretty lucky that he didn't get euthanized. But uh it, it turned into a, a show for for Jackson. Uh it was his only one hour show at the time, years really? and half hours. And uh it was uh, quite an experience because the cat at first, for the first couple of weeks, was sweet as pie. And we all thought in our arrogance, uh, he just needed a cat savvy understanding environment and there's nothing wrong with this cat. And then one day I came in and for no good reason at all, he started to vocalize and whine and yell and he attacked me and sent me <clears throat> to the emergency room oh my god yeah that was that was a surprise was yeah. like teaching yeah. first aid and a bite dangerous yeah and a bite yeah a bite. 
Where did um, he find you? On my ankle. Okay. Yeah, he. I was trying to get out of there, and he attacked. Um, it's a long saga, but does it uh, have a happy ending, please? It does. All right. It has, it has the thing. perfect ending, um, but it took a while. They tried to find out what was wrong with him. They did all the medical tests and found nothing. Um, they theorized certain things, and he would go for uh, weeks without having an uh, having an episode, and then it would happen. Well, that and is they odd. got cat behaviorists and veterinary behaviorists. Um, over the years, he was having it less and less, and uh, finally was adopted into a home with other cats and dogs and uh, uh, one of his caregivers at the shelter he'd been uh, staying in. So that's yeah. where he lives now. He's a happy 10-year-old cat. You know what, though? I salute you. Thank you for giving that cat a chance. Oh. I'm sorry was, about your ankle. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Just a little scar. Yeah. Well, you've got uh, two non-terrorists right now. What are your cat's I names? And what are their personalities? Personalities. I do. I have only two cats right now. So she is not a crazy cat lady. She just writes about no. genre. Okay. We've had a couple of losses in the last year. Um, but uh, we got James, who is a little gray boy, about 12, okay. with hyperthyroidism and kidney disease. And we've got Tyler, who is 18 or 19, and he's a big old rough and tough tabby. And he is the sweetest boy. He's got no teeth. He hisses <laughs> at everybody because he can't see, but then he'll just rub his cheeks against you because... What, what kind of markings does he have? He's... Uh, a brown tabby with a dark black back and uh, stripes, uh, stripes and spots, not the nice. not the splotches. So, He's gorgeous. Uh, how often do you go to the Oregon Humane Society to volunteer? How long have you been? Well, there? I was doing. I've been doing it since 2006, and um, before COVID, I was going quite a bit. Right now, they're uh, adopting only out of uh, over the. Uh, online services where they arrange everything and then they let people in uh, who have had appointments. So I haven't haven't been going there too much, but I have been fostering, especially at the beginning of COVID. They had to get uh, a bunch of the cats out of there. So I had three fosters and three regular cats, and that was interesting. Wow. All worked out. So let me see your fingers. How, 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 there. how strong are your typing fingers? These books, oh. how long does it usually take you to write a book? Uh, the process is about one year from uh, first draft to uh, publishing, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of increments in there. I've got an editor, I've got a beta reader. Um, a beta reader. Beta reader is somebody who reads it before the editor to see what they think of it, you know, because when it, when I write a book, um, I know what's going on. <laughs> and so I will miss places where I've not filled in enough information. That's good. Um, fresh set of eyes. That's what a, a big... Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so, how do you, is there a tip you can give folks that might be interested in writing? How do you make sure that what you say in chapter one is not replicated in chapter three or contradicted in chapter five? I have a, a huge series of notes, um, and as far as repetition and uh, mistakes, I catch a lot of that on about the third draft when I read it out loud. Okay. Oh, yeah, good. Print, you read it out I, loud. That's good. Yeah, I print, I print the whole thing and read it out loud, and uh, you catch a lot. You catch a lot of... Uh, if there's it repetition, like you're using you a different um, sense. I mean, I yeah. write a lot too, and sometimes, like you, I'll just stand up. I know it sounds weird, guys. I have a dartboard with magnetic marks, <laughs> so no cat or dog eye will be poked out. And when I'm struggling to kind of format what I'm writing, I throw my darts, and then there it helps a little bit. And then I talk out loud, even if I'm the only one in the room, because it's almost like you want to have a conversation, right? That's the tone, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
whether it's fiction or nonfiction, right? Yeah, yeah, reading out loud is important. The yeah. last thing I do is I get a proof copy of the book, which okay. is an actual book, and I read it and I mark it all up. Okay, make sure yeah. there's no uh-ohs, right? Yeah, and there are, there yeah. always are. So, so how would you describe your style of yeah. writing? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, is it op optimistic? Optimistic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I try the books and, uh, have happy endings, and they have. They do. Yeah. Um, no cats are killed, of course, okay. uh, except in the sci-fi ones because it's sci-fi, well, and all the character all the characters are cats. So. Uh, <laughs> Except for the demons, there's a few demons. Do you come up with this sometimes when you're sleeping at night, your dreams, or do your yes do your dreams dictate, yes. or do your books dictate your dreams? Uh, a little of both. I have used a lot of my dream sequences in, in my books. I've used some of my, of my life, my own life. Um, for me, everything is, is uh, inspiration. Nothing mm -hmm. sacred, so... You know, you, you may end up in there. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Um, I'm just wondering, if you had okay. a tall, dark, ginger boy cat hero, would you consider me pet safety cat Casey? I <laughs> saved lives. Just asking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm very curious about this science fiction world of all oh. cats. So yeah. can you give us a little hint about what it's about? Well, cats save the world. Well, we, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes in this world, it gets frustrating. And it's so nice to just write a book where everything turns out good. But there's hardship before, the, before, the, well, before that yeah. happens. Um, and so I've created worlds that uh, are different than this one. They're, they're parallel with this, but... Um, it's from the cat's point of view, and the cats have uh, different aspects. Um, magical transformations, daring rescues, a journey through time and space. Will Slater and his companions succeed in defeating the malevolence before the universe is gone forever? So the cat's name is Will Slater? No, Slater. Will Slater. Oh, Will Slater. The cat's Slater. name is Slater. <laughs> It's a question. Will Slater. It is okay. a question. I thought he was Will Slater. I'm like, okay. That's, that's, not, that's not a bad name. <laughs> no, she's going to write it down, Kathy. And maybe Destiny yeah. will make it in. Destiny is, is lives in a house with cats, just like my two dogs. But, but I like cats. Oh. I think I am a cat. <laughs> my problem with dogs is I don't have any understanding of dogs. Yeah, I don't know dogs. And I can't write <laughs> something I don't know. The well, cats, one of the things I love about being... Uh, in the Cat Writers Association is they really appreciate having, even in a fictional setting, having a real uh, cat, catly cat. Um, and there are a lot of cat mysteries around in cat writing, cat fiction, that the cat is just some kind of... Uh, Arm candy. Exactly. I was yeah. going to say play setting, but yeah. There's a cat on the cover, and maybe Grandma has one in Chapter 13. Um, but in my books, uh, the cats are cats, and they act like cats. Even the cats in the fictional, the sci-fi, they act right. like cats. And cool. so I couldn't do a dog because I don't know how dogs... That's all right. That's all right. Hey, um, I want to see how well our audience that comes all over the world has tuned in to our special guest, Molly Hunt. So I got two <laughs> questions based on our chat, Kathy and I talking with Molly, and I want to see how savvy you were paying attention. The winners, there's going to be two winners. Um, you're going to get an autographed copy. One of you is getting an autographed copy. Go ahead and show it up here, Molly. Ghost Cats of Ocean Cove, the first in a new series that she's doing. And the second is called Cat's Eyes, and that was the first in her series of the Crazy Cat Lady Cozy Mystery Series. So here comes my questions. What was the name of the ghost cat? Starts with an S. 
that is now going to be, is that in the Ghost Cats of uh, Ocean Cove? Okay, everybody start typing in your answers. Kathy will pick the winner this weekend. So go ahead and give your best guess. And the second one is, we all learned a new word today. <laughs> you write four books in a series. What is it called? What is that term called? If you write four books in a series, what do you think? I got it. Okay. I, all right. So I'm going to turn off my screen for a minute because I'm going to get ready to make my cocktail. But appropriately, my cocktail is in sync with the breed we're going to be talking about, Kathy. And you too, Molly, jump in. And that is the Mayabalus Maine Coon, because that's the name of my cocktail, Mayabalus <laughs> Coon Cocktail. So at this time, Kathy, please go ahead and share about that big gentle giant. Oh, okay. Let's talk about the Maine Coon Cat. So we actually have two breeds that have the word cat in their breed name, the Maine Coon Cat and the Norwegian Forest Cat. They both have cat actually as part of their breed name. Uh, this is a presentation I did Sometime back, as you can see, we've changed our background logos and things like that since then, but I, this is my busy time of year. I didn't have time to make a whole new presentation. So let's go into the Maine Coon Cat. This is the one uh, Maine Coon that I owned. This was, are you ready for this? That was his name. I called him Rue. The Maine Coon Cat is the Native American long-haired cat, and it was first recognized as a specific breed in the state of Maine where it's also the official cat breed of that state. Uh, the Maine Coons we suspicion are a product of the Viking cats when they docked uh, up in the New, in New England area. They had probably Norwegian forest cats uh, or maybe some more Persian type cats. Those cats got off, bred our domestic short hair, made a hybrid looking cat. And um, when the cats were born, they came up with big raccoon tails I think they really thought the raccoons were breeding the cats. Um, so there's lots of different ways of how they think this breed was created. But it is a very sturdy, rugged breed of cat. It has an uneven, shaggy coat, which is a very important aspect of this breed because they actually put more points on coat in this breed than even a Persian breed. So they really want that coat to be shaggy. It has three distinct uh, lengths and a long furnished tail. And I love this picture of this girl with this long furnished tail. Oh my um, goodness. Uh, the Maine Coon has tufted paws, uh, so they have like built-in snowshoes. Mm -hmm. So despite their weight, they can walk on snow. Their ears are large and well furnished. Um, they're able to curl up and use that tail to keep them warm. They are highly intelligent very sweet dispositions. In fact, they are nicknamed the gentle giant. And thank goodness they are gentle because when I'm judging them and they weigh 25 pounds, I don't want them getting mad at me. You know, um, your males can be from 18 to 20 pounds. The girls are from anywhere from 10 to 18 probably. So they are large cats. Uh, if you're looking to get a Maine Coon cat, you want to definitely be talking to a breeder that pays attention to the hips and, uh, you know, the, the knees and, and works with a, a set of genetics where the, the cats are not going to have any genetic problems down the line. These are some pictures that I grabbed. Most of these are off the internet. These two kittens up here was a litter that I produced. Here is their mother completely out of coat in the summertime with a couple of the kittens. But these cats come in all colors except for the Siamese markings. So they will not have the Siamese albino gene markings, but they, uh, they come in all kinds of uh, tabby patterns, solid color patterns with white, uh, smoke and shaded and, and um, anyway, lots of different colors. There's a cameo in white. Here's a brown tabby in white. Here's another white. Here's a big boy. Looks like a black smoke and white. Uh, these little tuxedo babies that look really cute with their little vests of white. And they all have little white chins, uh, which is I thought was a cute picture. So the Maine Coons are our domestic long hair breed of cat native to North America. And uh, they have very soft voices. They're pretty quiet cats. 
and they're very easy to live with, very gentle, very sweet dispositions. And so that is quickly the Maine Coon Cat. Did you want to share something, Molly? Yes. I was so intrigued when uh, you told me you were going to feature the Maine Coon today because I, I think they're so beautiful. I mean, they just are. But uh, my recent book, uh, Crazy Cat Lady Cozy Mystery number seven, features a Maine Coon cat. Hey. And the tagline is a locked room, a dead man. The cat is the only witness and he isn't talking. Oh, I like that. That's I good. love it. Good, good presentation, Kathy. <laughs> hey guys, as the Lynn Connolly character says in the books that Molly Hunt writes, purebred cats, CFA, they recognize that they can help even cats like Casey. So can we talk a little bit about the CCW, Kathy? You bet. Our Companion Cat World is our program to recognize the non-pedigree cats. When you register your cat for a one-time fee of $13 and you upload a picture, not only does your cat's picture go up on our gallery of cats, but you also get this beautiful card with Don't your cat's it. picture and <laughs> your cat's name and your owner's name. It comes in luggage tags, rings for your keychain. You can check it all out on CFA's website at cfa.org slash ccw. And a portion of your registration fee goes to a local shelter. So everybody check it out on CFA's website. As I'm going to do that right after I get off of here, get my two cats certified. Thank Perfect. you for Love doing it. that, Molly. Casey and Rusty are, are proud card carrying members. In fact, Casey says it. sometimes these cards even taste good, but don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're good to scratch on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, we all love our cats, and we want to do the best we can to keep them safe. So I'm happy, uh, due to popular demand, I'm going to give do one more veterinary-approved cat-only first aid CPR class this year. And it's going to be Tuesday, December 14th. It's from five to eight um, central time. So the folks out on West Coast time like uh, Molly, you're most welcome to come uh, for other, it's, it's $40, you get a course book, you get not one, but two cats, Casey and Rusty. Plus because it's through Zoom, you can be in your own home working with your own cats to give more hands-on. As I have done for all my guests, Molly, if you're available, you are comped and you are most welcome to join that class. And we ask that you just spread the word if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, I would love to join. Because Casey is saving lives uh, one per yes. at a time. And I gotta tell you, Rusty, I miss him because I'm here babysitting my sister's canine posse. But of all the things I do, and I do love to write, I do love to host shows, Teaching first aid is really where I'm passionate. And for all those out there that have dogs, we also have a dog cat class coming up. It is November 13th. So please go to Pet First Aid for you. We hope to see you. We've drawn people from all over the world and we really wanna save the lives and be proactive. So thank you for letting me to share that, Kathy. Cool. So uh, are, we, are we ready to maybe, uh, are we just the kitty cocktail, right? Yeah, we're ready to start talking about the Meowvelous Maine Coon cocktail. All right, I gotta tell you, I love bourbon. I have a, a collection of different types of bourbons. Um, it's a sipping drink. It isn't a glug, glug, glug drink. Not uh, one of those that's really into a pina colada. So this is one of my most favorite uh, cocktails, kitty cocktails I've created. It's called the Marvelous Maine Coon Cocktail because you want to uh, toast to your sweet feline friend with an apple flavored bold drink. And again, check this drawing out. This graphic is done by the genius, the talented, all breed CFA judge and editor of Cat Talk, our friend, Teresa Kiger. So um, we wanna thank you for um, creating that, Teresa. So to make this drink, um, you gotta have real cool ice cubes. Not the little ones that spit out of your uh, freezer machine. 
this is not expensive. You can get one of these little um, rubberized uh, ice cube things. And uh, then you'll always have the cool cocktail um, drink. Have for this seen drink. those ones that they make a great big ice ball? Yeah, they make them in circles or squares. Yeah. So in this drink also, it's really important the drink that uh, glass that you use. You need what's called a rock glass. It needs to be something uh, not big and tall or, or shaped like a martini glass. And to do this, you need your favorite bourbon. And you're going to have a lot in here. So don't drive. Okay, <laughs> you want to do two ounces, which is an eight count on your Posi pour. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're not old enough, Casey. And then you want to add two ounces of apple cider, not apple juice, apple cider. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, two ounces because it is, you know, pumpkin season. Yeah. And we got two there. All right. Then you want to go ahead and do one ounce of sweet red vermouth. Now, remember, I'm a licensed bartender, and I've learned a lot about vermouths. They're different. The dry vermouths, the sweet vermouths, these have to be refrigerated. We hardly use them, but they need to be refrigerated. Otherwise, they lose their punch. So on this one, you're going to do one ounce of uh, a sweet red vermouth. So it's one, two, three, four. And I forgot the lemon juice. So pretend you want one <laughs> spoon of lemon juice. And then you top it with the very potent orange bitters. One drop is really good. You want three drops in your glass. So one, two, three. I'm so glad Casey doesn't like alcohol. He's like, that doesn't smell like cheese. You have no milk products in there, so he's not no. interested. And with this one, it's not a shaking. It's a mild, methodical stir. And then you chill it by popping out one of these beautiful square ice cubes. You drop it in the glass. Yeah, adorn it with a few slices of apple and you stir it. And as you let it savor, it's gonna all meld even more. But at this time, whether you have the Mayabalus Maine Coon cocktail or what do you got, Kathy? Uh, Sprite Zero. Sprite Zero, <laughs> and what do you have, Molly? Coffee. Coffee? Whatever your choice is, I ask all of you, please raise a glass. And let us toast to all cats, purebreds, and cats like Casey. They make us better humans. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, let the pumpkin season begin, baby. This is yeah. going to be, I'm going to savor this all night. Bring on the <laughs> fall. Part of a good bourbon. You, it isn't quantity. It's, it, it's, it's just the sipping and then enjoying. And every sip, I'm going to toast to a kitty. And I hope you guys do the same. Hey, I hope you've had a fun time on the show today, Molly. Yeah, that was great. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't like going to the dentist, huh? Uh, no. All right. Okay. Um, we do appreciate you, and we do have your all your web social media sites posted. Again, she's giving away two of her books. She's autographing them. So I hope you paid attention to the trivia question. I also, at this time, want to thank my co-host, Kathy uh, Black and Dougie Destiny. Destiny. Uh, Casey has been pretty damn nice today, don't you think? He's been yeah, so quiet. Really, really good. Um, we appreciate the Cat Fancier Association for hosting Meowy Hour each and every Wednesday. We thank our sponsor, In Clover, the maker of dog and cat supplements and much, much more. Oh, please open that up after the show, Arden, please. <laughs> Uh, next week, next week, we have Tanya Alexis, and she is going to teach us about the benefits of cat yoga. Do not expect me to bend like a pretzel. What do you guys think about um, that notion of cat yoga? Is it doing yoga with cats, or is it do uh, having our cats do yoga? You're going to have to find out, but I'll give you a clue. 
I have a very flexible spine. <laughs> and you don't. Don't give a cat like that. Um, so um, I want to have a little fun. I am babysitting six dogs right now. So we're going to end Meowy Hour with them running in. So I'm going to lose my uh, screensaver. So we got one minute. Here we go. Who let the dogs out? Who? <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, here they come. Beware. Beware. <laughs> come on, you guys. Come on in. Come on. It's me. Here we are. Come on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They, on, they, saw, they, saw, they saw Casey and turn and ran. Come on. Up, come on. Up, come on. Up, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Casey's just kind of going home. Yeah. <laughs> what? Come here, Daddy. Come here, Daddy. Come on, let's go up. Come on. Go up. Come on. Let's go, Daddy. All right, we got some of them. How's that? Oh, my God. That's enough. Another sip. Hey, everybody. Until next time, same cat channel, same cat time. We'll see you on Meowie Hour. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, Molly.